What's going on ladies and gentlemen, it's your favorite cancer causing appliance microwave and for today's video We're gonna be looking at the newly released trailer video for the Hereford base That's gonna be coming out for the Grim Sky DLC probably like September 4th I would say now that's not a 100% confirmed date But if we go ahead and look at the calendar here It looks like uh, Paris is gonna be starting on the 17th through the 19th And then generally the TTS will be live like two days after on a Tuesday and then two weeks of testing Which will be the fourth so probably the fourth of the week after this patch will be live now if you guys don't know i did a video about the grim sky dlc operators that are coming out we got our first look at that you can check out a link down below in the description so let's go ahead and check out the cringy intro subscribe All right, for the first thing I want to go ahead and mention about this video and what I see, it appears to me that the whole map has been completely redone. And it kind of has that old World War II feel of it. You know how like the all the elites are where they have that old timey feel? It kind of it kind of feels like they're all set within that timeline. But the crazy part about this whole video that you guys probably haven't even noticed yet is the rain. There's actually weather effects within this map. Now, it was alluded that there might be weather effects within the new map via the gift and the image that was released by Ubisoft over the past week. But we got our first look at it, dude, and I am so happy about this. I mean, everything here just screams old school, and I absolutely love the style. Another thing that you probably didn't think about is that this appears to be set in a different timeline like I mentioned before. Now, does that mean that Rainbow Six is actually in the real time, or is it spanned across different periods of time. Hmm. There's a lot of hidden information in this trailer. So we can kind of see that the core of the map is basically the same, but the art is completely redone. We can also see that some of the walls on the maps are now unable to be breached, kind of like the whole top area of the map. Now it also appears that there might be two different buildings within this map. Now on the current here for base map, there is a second building that you get on top of the roof and you're able to peek inside the uh, windows up on the second and uh, first floor. But who knows, we'll have to wait and see when it releases. Now I don't miss playing here for base and rank like i said in the last video it was super stale and boring there was basically one bomb site but this looks like it's going to be pretty awesome and i cannot wait to get my hands on it and play it in paris next week so yesterday ubisoft released a dev blog talking about the map rework philosophy and i didn't want to do a 10 minute video about it i wanted to go ahead and add this in with the trailer to make it a look a little bit better you know what i mean and in the dev blog they go on to talk about how some of the maps need to be drastically changed or you can just replace a few walls to make a map competitive now here for base is an example where a map that needed a a giant rework to make it competitive. I mean, like I said before, I mean, there was only one bomb site, you had one main stairwell, and that was basically it. It was a fuse's paradise because there's only one or two rooms to hide into for each site. They said in the dev blog that their overall goal of this process is to create more feasible defender site choices. Our hopes are not to remove the most favorable selections, but to make other choices more practical, leading to a fresh experience. Additionally, changes to the layout of the map will open up better possibilities for defenders to move around the map as well as attackers whenever they're assaulting the objective. For example, ensuring that players have rotation opportunities and are not funneling into a single choke point to access the portion of the map. And then they talk about how some maps suffer imbalanced bomb sites, and that they will either be reworked or removed from the ranked professional play, such as Tower. Now, I'm not quite sure why they actually added Tower after Favela was like such a flop. I don't know if you guys have ever played Favela or not, but it's basically a very small map. On the outside, is uh, everything is breachable from the outside, and there's zero vertical gameplay. So essentially, a Thermite can just walk up, open up a wall from the side, and just plant the diffuser. Well, Tower pretty much had that same feel, except for it wasn't as small. Sure, there are small 
small rooms with inside the sensor of the tower, but uh, you, you basically swing in from the outside and that's how you get inside the map. Favela had a giant problem with spawn peeking and tower was basically the favela of it without spawn peeking, if that makes any sense at all. So again, one of the biggest problems with tower and favela was the vertical gameplay. There was absolutely none except for hatches. And here for base pretty much fell in line with favela and tower in terms of map design. It was pretty much the same thing, but different types of style. Now, all three of those maps have been taken out of the rank scene and they've been added into casual except for favela. But after the Grim Sky DLC, I'm pretty sure they're going to add here for base back into ranked. So I'm really hoping that this rework will include more of that to make it more balanced. I mean, that's one of my biggest complaints about some of these maps. I mean, there's no vertical gameplay in some of them. I mean, could you actually imagine attacking armory on border whenever there's a mirror there and you can't go below and get the mirror? I mean, yeah, of course, if you have a Twitch drone, you just make it a little bit easier. But otherwise, there's always another way to get around that. And on some maps such as Tower, Favela, and here for base, you're not able to do that. Now, I know Meme Park is actually still in rotation, but it actually has quite a bit of vertical gameplay, which is why it's still in ranked. Now, it isn't good enough to be competitive, so it's not ever going to go there unless they do some of the changes, and it's quite dark. But to me, Rainbow Six Siege is just that. It's all about vertical gameplay. I mean, that's the thing that it has over most games. Now, I'm talking about first-person shooter games here, but still, that's what makes it so different. You're able to hold the objective from above or below with ease. So that way, if the attackers do take over the site, you're able to retake it from below via a pulse, a C4 from Valkyrie or something like that. So it's fantastic to see these map reworks and I really appreciate that because I mean, Ubisoft already had the map done. They could have just scrapped it, but no, they went back and they tried to make it more competitive. Anyways, I hope I stretch this video out. I don't think I've quite made 10 minutes, but uh, it was a long video for a trailer. You guys know me. I try to get that sweet ad revenue, baby. And that's it for me today, guys. I hope to see you guys in the next video. Make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe if you want to stay tuned to all the Rainbow Six Siege news. And I'll be testing out all the new operators in the maps next week in Paris. Probably have a video released on, what, the 19th or the 20th, I believe. Yeah, it should be one of those two days whenever the embargo is released. I'll be playing again with Gavinacity and, oh my God, it's Priest and a few other YouTubers and streamers. So I hope to see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye!